Anyways, we're going to get into our general reading for this equinox time for the collective. What's all going on? What to expect this for this next phase that we're in right now? This is the Archangel Oracle. So they have been all coming in, all of our guides and guardians here with us, the angelics, the archangels. Um, I've taken out the angels of, without even really thinking about it. I've taken out the archangel oracle, the angels of abundance oracle, and the wild unknown tarot. First, we're going to start with the Archangel Oracle. How will work play out? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> work is, uh, I think work for most people is very, has a very different forecast. Um, it's a lot of restructuring going on. a little bit more. Willow says, LOL, sleep's been all over, super busy dream time, lots of morning meditation and before sleep, meditating a lot lately, anchor my baseline frequency, noticing energies that don't belong to me. Yeah, totally. Yeah, me too. It's like, I have, I have not personally gone outside a whole lot because the weather has been really, I, we've been living in rain and or snow for the most part for like 12 or 13 days now. <laughs> Seriously. It's been really different than any other time that I, since I've lived here, we have never had a stretch of weather like this before at this same time of this stuff going on right now. So it's been really interesting because I might, because I've been getting those, those messages to go out in nature too. And I'm like, uh, it's freezing and raining. <laughs> but then there's, there'll be like patches of time where it's not to like go out for a little bit, but yeah, it's been, it's been difficult to get nature time, but I've been doing, you know, actual nature time. So I've been doing the meditations to help, you know, connect with Gaia and nature. And so that's helped when the sun has come out. Like I've tried to, you know, go out and then stuff. It's just has been, it's been a lot of days, a lot of back to back days of rain or it just being really cold. And I've just been really sensitive to the cold too. Um, kind of, I'm just, I'm so ready for, for sun. so ready for sun. <laughs> I can't even, but you've noticed a huge shift in a good way with people that didn't use to resonate with the things that I have shared in the past. Wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. I'm glad to hear that. That's fantastic. Well, I think that there is, like I wrote about in the description of this video, there is a lot to be positive and thankful for. There is a lot to, definitely we know that for a fact, There, ha they have been in the past. Uh, and, and we're finally catching up, I think, in most places around the world uh, to really what needs to be done as far as people not commingling and not going out in, into big crowds and into public spaces and stuff like that. Uh, 
so that's definitely gonna gonna help and but still you know it could be it could be way worse and this is just really kind of more of more intensely of course but more of putting the spotlight on things that are not that are not working that that aren't uh systems and practices and stuff and and that that need to change and also it's giving people an opportunity to 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 see and feel and be more connected it's you know we i never know like okay let me put it this way the way that i see this is like i just got this flash of like people with their children at home like families at home parents were isolated that used to be out in the world all the time and they're like what the fuck? I'm not used to this. They're having a hard time. Like we, those of us that are used to this, used to being alone, used to being at home. We've been doing this for years. This is like, you know, aside from not being able to go to the store and get our shit like we want to, or have Amazon just, you know, deliver to us the things that a lot of people, that's not the case. They're like, I'm not used to being isolated. I'm not used to being at home by myself, going to work and, and not traveling the way I normally do. And I, I follow a lot of comedians because I love comedy and they all have shows and they're all touring and they're all have, you know, all this stuff going on and it's all been shut down. And, uh, so, you know, so, and that's just one little aspect, you know, there's all sorts of people that try and, and I'm seeing animals just, you know, aside from people being sick, if they're, if they're dealing with their, you know, their humans being sick, animals being like, wow, this is awesome. I'm usually alone all day. And look, everybody's home. Um, just like it's an extended weekend, you know, kind of thing. Uh, and, and I just keep like, like sometimes we, we think that, or we see things obviously a certain way. We have our ways of per perceiving and per perception of situations. So everybody could look at this whole thing to come out of that. Or because of people being forced to, to stay home and to isolate themselves and what that's going to do for the collective consciousness. Is this what needed to happen on some level so people can, can, you know, kind of turn off a lot of their life. And, you know, like I'm being shown like all of this stuff, like, are there things happening with the collective with you know, consciousness really needs to be pulled out of that, that school system mentality. Like I've just been shown like all these little pieces of things that are just going to be like kind of turned off and rewired with go, Oh, it's all bad. And go, well, you know, there are consequences to things, but because of certain events, we are experiencing certain new think differently. They just are period, you know? So, so we have to just open up our, our awareness to all of the different things that are shifting and changing and see how this could be, oh, this could be good in many, many ways. We just have to write out the different, you know, the, the, the growing pains of this, if that makes sense. Um, hey, Kevin, welcome, welcome. Um, oh, thank you. You made it. I'm so happy. Yeah, so Willow said, okay, friends and family. Okay, I read that. Oh, wait. Friends and family who are being forced to stay home are now doing the things they have wanted to do. My friend is now getting back into making music. Let's see exactly. Friends are not used to it, but are grateful to spend time with family and family now and pets. Yeah. Sean says, who's your favorite comedian? Um, there's a montage on the internet of people being interrupted by their pets while working from home. Oh, it's hilarious. I bet. Yeah. Oh, I'm used to that all the time. It's like <laughs> all the time. 
our family here is coming together. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, yeah, so I, I'm working with Groupon. I'm doing a couple of Groupons that are getting set up right now. And she's working from home. The girl that, uh, the lady that is my rep, she's working from home. And I'm like, how are you doing with that? And she's like, it's really weird. She's like, I'm used to, she's like, I'm not, she's like, I'm on my little computer. I'm used to my big, huge two computers and being with my team and, you know, go, she's like, it's just really weird. You know, and she just sounded really stressed out. She said that a lot of people, a lot of merchants and stuff like they, they're everything shut down. So all their stuff is shut down. And she's like, people are freaking out and stressed out, of course, you know? Um, so she sounded, she was pretty stressed, but just, just the change in their atmosphere, of not going anywhere, not having the kids at school and, 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 you know, there are things that can be done, you know, so people, you know, people just need to get really creative as far as what they're going to do, how they're going to come together um, after a certain point in time. It's still so early in this. It's still really early. We just all have to, again, be like, well, we're at home. So let's, let's, let's do things differently and, and kind of get used to that. But that's pretty funny that, that, uh, yeah, because their pets are like, and then the animals are not used to people, you know, if they don't work, normally work from home, they're not used to people working at home. So they're not, you know, when, when your animals are used to you kind of working from home, they kind of know in a sense, like when you're doing certain things, but, uh, but when they're not used to it, they're just like, it's all playtime. Uh, and to, you can hear Ariel, uh, I know it's been a long time for you. I'm working on a dragon pour. You know, I wanted to ask you about uh, your, cause I want to get, I want to get one of those gold, the gold portals and you were going to do dolphins. So I still want that if you're still doing those. That's awesome. A dragon portal. Um, and to answer your question, uh, Sean about my favorite comedian. I really don't have a favorite comedian. Um, I have a lot of comedians that I really like. Uh, I, I love, um, Dave Chappelle. Uh, I, I, um, I love Bill Burr and Burt Kreischer and Crystalia and um, I'm trying to think who else? Oh, there's like a lot of them. Um, I listen. I, I listen or watch a lot of their podcasts. They crack me up. I love. Oh, Tom Segura. Um, so I watch a lot of those podcasts and and their comedy. Brooke Kreischer just came out with a new special on Netflix. Um, yep. Crystalia, Theo Vaughn. Exactly. All those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in that circle <laughs> of all, all those people. Yeah. I, I dig that, that whole group, the whole like Joe Rogan group, basically that whole group of people there. Um, but as far as, uh, hey, what'd you say? My guides think I'm funny. It must be there. <laughs> oh, I guarantee you're their favorite show. And I bet that they think you're funny. That's hilarious. Um, do you ever find yourself putting on a show for your guides? I do that. <laughs> Cause they'll be like, give tell, talk. They'll be talking to me about stuff. They'll be like, come on, be positive, put on it, smile, smile. And then I'll just be like, ah, and be all stupid. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, come on, come on. And I'm like, Bleh! you know, make us all laugh and be silly. <laughs> I put on a show, I'll dance for them. And you know, it's fun. <laughs> They're a great audience. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 
Because it's true, you know, they, I feel like I owe it to them to give them a little bit of entertainment because they're so there for me and they're so like on point with, with getting me like, I don't know how to put that. It's just, it's, it's happened so many times and it's just, it's just better and better and better. Like that relationship is closer and closer and closer that it, it's like, I, I cannot see them, but they're literally like right there and I feel them so much and I hear them and I, you know, that it's, it's just like having people around. It's even better because they're not contagious. <laughs> uh, yeah, he does. He has a lot of great guests on his show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm glad that you understand that. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's true. It's fun. And it's, but you know, that's why it's like, once you get to a certain point in that connectedness with your guides, with your brothers and sisters of the light, like whatever, however you want to put them, whatever, however you want to refer to them. Once, once you're, you're, uh, like I'm on a first name basis with my number one guardian angel. Now I'll be like, and you know what? I'm still not used to using their name and I'll be like, thank you. And he'll like chime in with his name. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, right, right. Because I'm still like getting used to that. Um, yeah, I hearing them more and more. And that's awesome. Um, yeah, it hasn't been too long for me since I am like, aside from uh, like the archangels, you know, and, and having their name at the ready with cards and stuff and just knowing about them. Um, when it comes to our own personal angelics that are with us, uh, that's a different thing, you know? And for me, it, it was just, I never, to me, it was just like one voice, one mind, one thing that I felt and that was it. And as time has gone on, that has changed. It has, de I can definitely feel the different beings that come in and especially like, you know, what if, if I'm channeling, channeling, of course, but, but just in my, just in my own kind of private time, it's like, I feel the, the energy and the, the vibrations differently. There are, it, it did become more important to me to differentiate by, by name on a level um, whereas before it, it didn't, and I didn't know, even know how to do that or, or, or how to differentiate the, the, the feelings and the impressions. I used to call it impressions. Like when I was impressed upon, um, now it's being guided and feeling it like literally being talked to not just like a feeling of presence, not just a feeling of not being alone, not just a feeling of being loved, but a literal like being talked to. And that's been going on for a long time, but it's even, that's even gotten less staticky and has separated itself for me. Like I've gotten to a point in my own awareness and connectedness and energy and frequency to where I can tap into that level of a vibration to be able to differentiate, you know, it's just, it's a process. It's a total process. And in this, and especially since the beginning of the year, holy moly, raise your hand. If that's been like a super incline in your, like all that business with your energy and just knowing and feeling and, and all of that. I know that for the collective, especially the light body, it's been a big deal since since uh, and also balancing of the divine masculine divine feminine that's been coming through a lot a lot a lot um oh my, all right like pressure in the eye okay so okay back to the back to the cards guys i'm actually gonna pull some cards <laughs> um So here we go. Let's see what we what we get here. Is everybody still here? 
sensitivity. Sensitivity. With Haniel, you are extra sensitive to... <laughs> Because <laughs> we just got done talking. <laughs> oh, cards. Cards have been off the hook, too, like on a level. Um, you are extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now. Honor yourself and your feelings. Yeah, we're all extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now. Are we not? Holy shit. Talking about this. Just got done talking about this. Extra sensitive to people and their energies, whether they're around us or not, and are sen extra sensitive to our divine um, guardians on the other side of the veil. They're like literally right here. I Does anybody get the, um, the flashes of light in your, in your uh, peripheral vision? Anybody get that? It's easier to see at night than it is during the day. But does anybody get that? That's, yeah. Is it easier for you at night as well? Because um, this is what he, sh I'm saying he, I don't know why. But this is what he's showing me is, um, oh, it's my, okay. It's my, <laughs> speaking of, 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 of uh, my guardian angel who likes to tell me his name now. Um, he's like, that's me. I'm telling you. He's like, a lot of people are, are feeling much more in a real tangible way. They're like, they're like guardian. They're like number one guardian angel and, and seeing the light of them. It depends on if you pay attention. It kind of, it depends on what I'm doing. Like around on my phone on Instagram, not so much. <laughs> If I'm not doing like work on Instagram, because I do work on Instagram, like posting and stuff. I don't, I don't fuck around on, on Instagram a whole lot. Uh, but sometimes I do kind of, you know, scroll through and, and do indulge in some beautiful imagery. Hopefully that's what's coming through. And, um, but if I'm, let's say, if I'm channeling, if I'm doing automatic writing, if I'm meditating, if I'm drawing, if I'm, you know, tapped into that, like that zero point, like creational, usually that's like when those lights will kind of come up more. I think it's also reflective. So it's our guides that are with us that we can really kind of see their energy. And again, it is easier when it's darker um, to see those, <clears throat> those lights. And they'll usually <clears throat> just be like, right. They're just like right here. <laughs> and, and they'll just kind of pop and crackle. And you can just see that in your peripheral vision. Um, so we are more sensitive that, to that. We are being, some of us are getting a lot more sensitive to the energies around us and and even being able to perceive more with our eyes than we used to. What this also means we're much more sensitive with our eyes. So there's, I and I've known this and this has happened throughout my ascension process, but this is something definitely for sure that has been a big jump in, in its and my awareness of it as things have gone with me is that the higher and jump I have in awareness, ability, connection, um, sensitivities, there's the flip side to it where it's like, yeah, I am that much more sensitive as well. So um, I went through this process last month where I, I released a huge part of my anchored uh I guess you could say that that polar soul energy if any of you follow my podcast I had it I talked about it on my podcast uh, but anyway that got released and transmuted last month and that was a big event for me personally <laughs> in my ascension process my my own um journey in healing that was a level that I didn't even know existed. It was a, a process I had no idea about and happened um, on the Stargate very spontaneously. 
through a meditation, just like all of my other healings have taken place. And um, since then, I am super sensitive, super, super, super sensitive to uh, my smell. My sense of smell is just ridiculously sensitive. Uh, my eyes are super sensitive and I'm more sensitive to energies around me, like to the point where I'll feel nauseous if somebody's really like, like even more so like before it'd be like, okay, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm reacting in a way that I know I'm dealing with more negative energy, like go into a Walmart and then all of a sudden, like my body starts to react, like I'll get extra cold, I'll start yawning, sneezing, um, I'll get pressure in the head, depending on who I might be around, or if there's a, a large amount of people that have lower frequency around me. Now, it's it's even more than that. Um, so yeah, super extra sensitive. Uh Willow, extra sensitive. I have been working on standing my ground more when I feel like running away and just learning not to participate in unwanted energies. Awesome. Kevin said, I'm finally able to walk in my yard barefoot. <laughs> oh, really? The weather finally got to a point where you can do that? That's nice. Feels good to ground. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just go out and I sit on my... Um, on my just like right out here. I just like my butt on the ground, my feet and I put, it's like butt ground, my butt, my feet and my hands. And I'm just like, Oh yeah. <laughs> feels so good. Um, yes. My smell and eyes had been very sensitive. Yeah. It was like, I thought my cat had like, I thought that somebody had peed like behind the, I was so confused. Like it, this was like the same, happened um this event happened with me and i was like trying to sleep and i'm like what is happening why does it smell so bad in here and i checked because i checked the um, i have a litter box for my cats where it's called the tidy cats breeze and if you have cats people you want this system <laughs> tidy cats breeze uh, it's the best because it, it doesn't work with regular cat litter. It's not a clumping litter. It is a graded litter box that uh, you put these pellets in and, and they poop and pee on the pellets. The pellets stay on top. Their pee goes down into the bottom where there's a pad and the pad soaks up the pee. And it works really well because you don't smell the pee. It traps the pee odor. Um, I used to be able to like, it worked so well that you could forget about it to the point where like, seriously, this is embarrassing, but it works so well where it's happened to me multiple times where I'm like, huh, it smells a little bit like pee. I should check on that pad. And then you open up the thing to check on the pad and the pad's literally floating in pee. And you're like, oh my God. And then the smell hits you. You're like, oh my God. Like, even though it's graded and the pellets are on top, it, and, and there's something in that pad that really, really traps that, that odor, that pee odor, which is fantastic. The pellets, they're like, they, they last for months and months and months. They stick to the poo. So you have, and they do get peed on and pooped on. So you have to kind of put a new bag in every few, every couple like month or so, or two months, depending on what you got going on there. Um, but it's the best. And I had just changed this pad a couple days before this event had happened with me. So I'm like, I know that's not it. So why am I smelling pee so bad? Well, it wasn't just a couple days. It was more like a week, but I could go, especially with that litter box, I could go longer with that pad. Well, it turned out that no, it was just my sensitivity had risen to a point where the, like the pad had gotten used and I, I just gone through this, this releasement of energies and everything just like shot up in, in like everything with me. And I didn't, wasn't aware of it. I didn't realize that that had happened. And I didn't even realize that I was more sensitive to the energies of other people until I was like literally nauseous and, and clammy and my head hurt. Like it felt like a, like almost like a panic attack. And I maybe had one of those in my life. 
And, but I was like, and it was just this energy coming from this other person. And because it was, he was really negative and he was negative towards me, it was, and I was like, and because I feel in my body, what other people feel in their body, I thought, well, is this something that he's feeling? Is he feeling nauseous? Is he feeling clammy? Is he feeling, you know, all the, cause I was like shortness of breath, nauseous, clammy like, you know, that, that, that feeling that you get, it's like, but it was, what it was, was hard, was my body reacting to the psychic attack of his negative energy coming at me, even though there wasn't anything actually physically going on, it was all energetic and my body was reacting to it energetically. And it was really intense. And I'm like in my head talking to my guides going, what is happening right now? Because I don't react like that. And I'm like, is this him? Like, is he feeling like this? And I'm like, trying to figure it out. And, and my guys are like, well, it is him, but he's not feeling this way. You're feeling this way because of what's going on with him energetically. And I was like, holy shit, this is, this is on a level that, I mean, I had to acclimate to it. I really had to acclimate to it. Um, was it, it took a little bit. Um, there's a 10 foot square in your walk on in your yard. You walk on. Oh, cool. There's a bunch of deer that bed down. Oh, oh, how cool is that? Sometimes when I meditate, I smell sweet things that don't make sense. Cause there's like, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah. Those are our angelics. will do that for sure. For sure. Um, they rose roses will will be a, a scent that that is really common to to smell and it's because it has the highest frequency it's the highest frequency flower that there is and so i'll just get these bursts of of smelling roses and i'm like yeah that came from up there because it, there's nothing going on here um it is one of my own personal favorite smells or scents and and i do love that but it, it the that will be a big, that'll be a big one. Also, um, gardenias and lilies, um, are also, uh, those scents come through really, really, uh, intensely. Um, it's the same as like finding a feather or a penny or a dime or, you know, the different things that we, we may find, out and about when we're just, you know, doing our thing. Um, yeah, it's really cool. How about tastes? What do you mean? What do you mean? How about tastes? Like being sensitive to taste? If that's, if that's what you mean, being a sensitivity to tastes. Um, for me, it started a couple of years ago where like, depending on if I was like eating with like a, a fork or a spoon and if it had some weird, like thing metally going on in there, even it like, and it, it happened with stuff like at home. So like I changed, it didn't, I would use stuff like I normally did like spoons and stuff like I went through a period where I was like eating with my big wooden spoon because I was so sensitive to the metal <laughs> of my utensils that's kind of evened out but I went through I, I did go through a period of that where I metal was just like I was I could taste it oh you'll get a random taste in your mouth oh that's interesting I haven't experienced that personally I don't know. That's interesting. You could be picking up on what other people are tasting. If you're around other people that are tasting stuff, or you could be that that's a possibility. That could be it. Maybe. Um, unless it happened, unless you're asking questions of your guides and it has some type of connection there where, you know, that could be it as well. I will be eating and then I will get a taste in my mouth. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> um, 
I mean, reading, <laughs> eating, I'll be reading and then I will get a taste in my mouth. That's interesting. Hmm. Really interesting. You should just document what that, when that happens and victory. Look at that. You guys, this card has been coming up a lot. So immediately what I, what I, oh, it happens quick. Interesting. So immediately what I felt and saw with this card is, uh, that celebration thing, that celebration of life thing, um, uh, <clears throat> And the understanding. It's just this kind of this overall feeling of. How everything is, is coming into place, even if it feels and seems and looks like everything is falling apart um, to some people. It doesn't feel like that to me. Like this stuff. I mean, I, I don't like that. I can't get my shit on Amazon <laughs> and I, I don't like that people some are stressed and, 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 and in fear and, and that stuff. But personally it's like, you know, it's one of those things. And I think that, that this is about, uh, when I see this, I just see a lot of I guess you could say instead of seeing the people who have succumbed to this illness with the coronavirus as victims to see them uh, to, they're saying don't what I, what I'm really feeling with that is it's saying, don't like, don't, don't, don't think like that. Like, don't put that on, on them. It's really important to not to put that on them. Um, because what I'm getting with that is that for a large majority of them, they were elderly and of course, after they transition and go to the other side, they, they immediately are, are released and happy and see the greater picture. And so they're saying they're kind of like all standing there in this way, just saying, we're not, we don't see ourselves as victims. So please don't put that on us. We're part of a greater framework of, of of bringing in the new of, of bringing in the new paradigm there's a shift there's this great shift that's taking place and and, and so that's I think that since this morning when I woke up and I was just in this like ridiculously bubbly mood and all I kept thinking and feeling was this energy from Gaia and this energy from the other side that was just very uh, all about celebrating life and in um, the lives of the people who are no longer with us um, in general, but with this particular thing and um, and just the light coming from them very strong light, very strong light. And, and they're obviously still very connected to. So that's a big thing to, to keep in mind too, as this thing moves forward, they're still extremely connected. So once again, victory. <clears throat> hey, Karen. Hi, Lutz. How are you? Nice to see you. How you doing? 
So we have Willow and Kevin and Sean and Karen and somebody else. Well, somebody else is here, maybe. So welcome. We have this other card sticking out. Let's take a look. Oh, take back your power. So again, this is more kind of of this taking back, like again, like this means two things, taking back our power here. And as we transition and cross over, once we die, we get back into, into that, you know, out of physical power into the, you know, a hundred percent energetic power as a soul. And, and this is, this is a, it is a, not something to, um, or it is something to celebrate the whole, that entire process. Yay. I'm so glad you're here. Okay. So <laughs> victory takes so sensitivity, sensitivity with Haniel. Take back your power. And then we had victory with Sandal Fawn. Your prayers have been heard and answered. Have faith, have faith. So it's really important to keep positive, you guys. And um, take back your power with Raziel. Use your God-given power and intention to manifest blessings into your life. And to connect, I'm hearing, to connect. So we all have the power to connect more, to really focus in on connecting, on healing ourselves, staying as healthy as we can possibly stay <clears throat> during this time. Raise your hand if, you know, those of you who are weed smokers, raise your hand if you uh, have tried to smoke less while this whole coronavirus thing is going on. Um, Because, you know, if you smoke weed, you are a smoker. So I know sometimes people who smoke weed don't see themselves as smokers, but I mean, we have to call a spade a spade, right? <laughs> if you if you're smoking, even if it's weed, you're a smoker. So we have to be aware that um, with this upper respiratory virus, those of us who smoke are at a greater risk of getting um, of getting more to deal with on that front. If we do get it, you're smoking less. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm just, I'm, um, you know, it's like, ah, eh, like when I think about it, I'm like, yeah, maybe not. Maybe I won't. <laughs> you know, just trying to tone it down just a little bit. Um, I could go for some edibles though. Maybe I should make, maybe I should call for delivery. <laughs> we have on our mountain, these people, they make, um, these amazing edible, well, it's our dispensary, but they make amazing edibles and they make these chocolate bars that are like this big and that thick and they're dark chocolate and like eating three of these squares will put you in a nice happy place. It's, it's not, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Have not smoked in years. I know healthy lifestyle. Speaking of trying to be healthier healthy lifestyle. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Focus. Focus. I know it's illegal there. That sucks. <clears throat> Archangel Raphael, eat a healthful diet, get adequate sleep and exercise regularly for optimum health. Uh, you know what? The the big thing when it comes to being healthy right now, aside from obviously taking care of ourselves with eating, not smoking as much as we normally do, um, getting good sleep, meditating is working with the elements. Um, I wrote about that in my blog yesterday, uh, working with Gaia, bringing in nature into our world is into our inside is so important. So, so, so important. Um, like magically 
before all of this happened, I was guided to get massive amounts of Himalayan rock salt in these really big pieces. Let me show you. So I have them in a bowl with a candle. And our pieces like this and bigger piece uh, there some of them are, are like twice the size of this some of them are a little bit smaller but i got 10 pounds of himalayan rock salt i have i have this stuff everywhere all along my my window sills um i wanted to get more when i went to buy more they were it was out and this is before this whole thing and I order and then I went a few days later, found another pack, not as, I think it was more, I can't remember. It wasn't the exact same deal. I don't know what happened to that deal. It was a great deal. <clears throat> oh, I cannot tell you. And this was after my whole like shift that I was telling you about where everything got really intense um, with me and my sensitivities. And the, and I've been hearing from my guides, you need to, you need to get this, you need to get for a while. And I just kept forgetting, kept forgetting, kept forgetting, just not doing it. And then finally I did. And I got to tell you the shift in energy from feeling the outside and, and even my neighbors and their energy and negativity or whatever, the major difference inside my home, once I put this all around and I'm going to get more, like I said, so I'm going to have more even, oh my God, huge, 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 huge shift in energy. Just putting, putting that barrier with these big, huge pieces of Himalayan rocks on, and they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. Not only that, I got two, two more and new Himalayan rock salt lamps. I got one right here. Um, anyway, it's a, it's beautiful. But they came in a two pack. I have one in my bedroom now, and I have one. Um, I have one right here. They're about this big. Came in a two pack on Amazon for like stupid sixteen bucks or something. Like one is, it's like light, it's brighter, it's lighter and smaller. It's like this big. And then the other one's bigger. It's like this big. And it's, it's got a lot of darker um, swirls in it. So beautiful. So, so, so get and bring in as much nature as you can, um, including, you know, herbs and plants and flowers and, and um, having things filled up with water is, is good and burning burning um palo santo and sage and all of that stuff is going to really help keep keep us free of the energies that can kind of be overwhelming negatively okay oh there we go two new cards here <laughs> we have gifts from god with sandal font Speaking of gifts from Gaia and nature, is like every single card that and gets, <laughs> like I talk about it and then a card comes up. Isn't it supposed to be the other way around? Anyway, here we go. Gifts from gifts from God, gifts from Gaia. We angels bring you gifts from your creator. Open your arms to receive. So sometimes we need to go a little bit out of our way to open to open up the energies to to allow for this stuff to, to come into our world. But but consciously, um, and this also I'm hearing this also uh, relates and is pertains to the our gifts from Mother, Father, God, and our Creator. Those gifts are specifically speaking to our creative ideas and our creative motivation and and how we output and out how we channel out that that energy from mother father god into what we do so those are that's a gift from god and what what we're putting out is a gift from god and to recognize that um, gifts from God. We angels bring you gifts from your creator. Open your arms to receive. And of course, just the things that come into our world. Um, so there we go. Gifts from God. And 
<laughs> Last but not least, if it will focus, why won't you focus? It's not focusing, is it? <laughs> I don't know why I won't focus. I think it's focused there. Anyway, um, leadership with Archangel Gabriel. It is time for you to assume your leadership power and position and lovingly guide others. So speaking to um, us as lightworkers and empaths and things we know and how we can connect and just like what you were saying, Willow, about how your friends and family, how some of them weren't so open and weren't used to this lifestyle, but they are now. And and maybe you can, you know, you having that lifestyle can support them in that. Um, and, and just in general, just in general, when it comes to, I'm hearing just having a level head, <clears throat> being in peace not freaking out and being in fear and being um, scared or being angry or, you know, not having, not putting out those energies into the collective is how we can lead, you know, and when, when other people are stressed out and freaking out, you know, to, to not, number one, not be pulled into that. And number two, be the opposite of it and pull them out of it. So to lead in that way and to just be open in general. And when it comes to our own processes going forward, uh, there's going to be more opportunity I'm hearing for that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but wow. These are all really awesome cards. You guys, we have sensitivity, victory, take back your power so this is about connecting with the power of those and the light of those who have crossed over um not only through this event but but beyond and how we may have personal connection our own personal connections and of course taking back our power connecting connecting with our soul selves getting in touch with us with ourselves at this time especially for those of you who aren't used to living um, in a solitary way and are used to being more out there in the world. This is, this is a new territory for you. So kind of getting, getting used to that healthy lifestyle with Archangel Raphael, very timely advice here. So try to be as healthy as possible, healthy in your environment, healthy with, with whom you are around on every level, obviously um, recognize just, you know, we, we need to take care of each other in different ways. That means staying away from people because that's best. We need to stay away from people. If that means coming together in different ways, then we need to come together. So it really just all, all depends. I know. I love these cards too. They're amazing. Um, gifts from God. Gifts from God, you guys. All of this is so empowering and so positive. Gifts from God. There's so many gifts to, to behold and to see and to be a part of. And that's really what, what I'm seeing with this. And that, and, you know, just kind of try this just keeps chiming off. You're, you're a gift from God, what you are and what you do and what you put out is a gift from God. And, and that there's a lot, I'm feeling a lot of releasement when it comes to those, like, like what you were saying, Willow, about how you used to hold back or you used to kind of turn away from different things, like on that same level of things, um, where we used to be our like in our own way, we used to have these blocks, like a lot of these have been lifted. A lot of the readings that have come out in the last month have been about going through gates, um, going through initiation processes, things being lifted. Um, all of that stuff has been leading up to kind of where we are now. Um, it's just in these last couple of, of months or weeks, um, things are moving really fast, <laughs> but, but, 
But I think that for a lot of us, we've gone through this process of more discovery within ourselves, more understanding of what is what we're connected to, letting go uh, a lot more fears, a lot more of that like need to protect ourselves, a lot more of that kind of dissipating feeling into the power, like Raziel says, take back your power. So we've been doing that. And leadership. Um, this, what I'm hearing with this is for those of us who have roles of leadership, it's just time to step up more. It's or if we have or if it's a new thing for us, it, this is going to be a catalyst for that. Um, and just not not to let anything stop us. Nothing is going to stop this ascension process. This is a big part of it. Uh, we have to shift and pivot with what's going on and what's going to be happening in the future. But we are protected. We are safe. It's not the end of the world. I think nobody here thinks that, but, but, but it, it, it's just, it is the end of a lot of things that have happened in a certain way. And that's okay because that's evolution. And we're going through this big evolution process. I mean, I think that a lot of us that are, are more aware and awoken can see this from a higher perspective and go, well, we expected a lot of things to happen in 2020 and there to be major shifts in consciousness, major shifts in structure, major shifts in how in perception and reality and how people take care of themselves and what, what they look to, to, you know, what is healthy, what is not, how to, how to go about treating themselves physically and holy shit, <laughs> have we not, like, boom, we just landed on that level, didn't we? And wow. Like, I mean, uh, you know, I, like I said, not that I, I don't like a whole lot of preview in my life. I get enough of it as it is. But as things move forward, I'm just never, I just always just like, well, yeah, I was told some, you know, this sort of the stuff was, you know, happening in my wildest imaginations. Could I imagine this? No not for any of the, the stuff and levels that we've been through in these last few years. It's just, it's, a, it's, a, it's wild, but at the same time, it's, it's, it all makes sense um, on another level. And my candle just went out. Okay. How are we feeling guys? You're feeling good. How are we doing? It's six Oh three on the 19th. 603 here you guys 903 there on the east coast which i think all of you are on so i am the only one i'm pretty sure right now i'm gonna take just a minute and close my curtains before we continue because it is getting dark It is foggy and snowy and rainy outside. Karen, how is it in North Carolina with your weather? It's pretty much raining everywhere else. And what about you, Kevin? Is it raining there? It was raining for Sean, for Sean and well, it's probably raining where Kevin is since he lives pretty close to Willow, actually. Pretty sure you guys live pretty close pretty near each other or at least in the same sort of area there in Canada if I remember correctly okay and then I guess I want to ask you guys has, have you guys gotten any any messages, any visions, any understandings or any, you know, call them prophecies or messages or anything that have come through for you that have um, kind of helped shift your reality or anything you guys want to share with the group at this time? Any tips or tricks or anything you want to 
discuss before we move forward. It might be in alignment with what we just got with these cards. Please chime in. Anything new, any any new connections um, in the physical or otherwise? Anything coming through differently or feeling differently or revelations? There's supposed to be a lot of that going. Okay. <sighs> I'm feeling good. Good. No is just no. Oh, North Carolina, North Carolina is good. Just a shitload of pollen. Oh, okay. Both in Ontario. Stay stubbornly optimistic. Expect the unexpected and have fun. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's good advice. Stubbornly optimistic. Mm -hmm. I always called myself a realistic optimist. I was a realist. I'm, I'm a realistic optimist. Um. So yeah, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely hope for the best and try, you know, be positive. But I'm real. I, I'm realistic, you know. <laughs> as well. Like I see reality. So I always called myself a real people would ask me, are you a pessimist or an optimist? I'd be like, I'm a realistic optimist. Like I, that's the way I, <laughs> I don't think I've shifted too much from that. Although reality is a completely different thing for me than it used to be. So now I, I know that my I know so much more of what shapes my reality. So I guess that that realistic part is more like I have to remember to try to be, to be realistic when it comes to what I know versus what happens and transpires around me um, and, to, and, to, and sometimes just optimistic through that. Ha, <laughs> that's more, that's kind of accurate. You notice that your um, Bassett ass statue shifts. Yeah, you told me that. That is really interesting. Re I still haven't gotten mine because I, I just haven't, haven't gotten it yet, but I do want to, I am going to get, get one. Ooh, right off the top, right off the top you guys. Barely started and right off the top um, with our Angels of Abundance Oracle. At 151.51 into our, into our feet here, power of prayer. Power of prayer. Uh, give this situation to God for uplifting and healing. That's what we're doing here. Give this situation to God for uplifting and healing and be open to miracles. Heaven's unlimited resources, love and answers are waiting for your, are waiting your, what? Are, oh, sorry, are awaiting your prayers. Be sure to act upon the divine guidance. Mother, Father God gives you, gives you, sorry, gives to you in response to your prayers. Be sure to act upon the divine guidance Mother, Father, God gives to you in response to your prayers. I love this card. This is awesome. I have not, we have not seen this card. I, um, I don't even know. It's been a while. Give this situation to God for uplifting and healing and be open to miracles. Heaven's unlimited resources, love and answers are waiting your prayers. So basically what they're saying is our intention is to be amplified and we're fully supported in our positive um, manifestations, not only for ourselves, but for the collective. And that goes for healing. So, so, and sending out healing 
energies like we're going to be doing today in our in our meditation which i'm really excited about um sorry that i heard kitties uh so that's kind of this is like immediately what i when i saw this and saw power of prayer i immediately went to meditation intention um and all of that good stuff so you guys power of prayer awesome card right off the top i just like i went whoop there's another one i just like went once and it went phew, and flew right off here's another one face your financial fears look at this face your financial fears how many people are financially in fear right now wow <laughs> When you are honest with yourself about fears of success or failure, they can no longer control you. Be free of hidden fears by exposing them to the light of awareness and you'll realize that you, in fact, have nothing to fear and that every successful person has struggled with and released these self-doubts. So similar to... Um, I guess it was the leadership card uh, about getting kind of getting out of the way. And especially now where it seems like, oh, now we have like who knows what in our way when it comes to uh, finances and security and all that stuff. Again, this is like don't succumb any of us to the to the power of the the fear, the money fear program. Um, not for ourselves and not for other people. So because that is like the next huge component in this. It's like it's lack. So it's sickness and then lack, lack of money, lack of lack of supplies, lack of infrastructure or the collapse of infrastructure, or like the fears that are going on right now. Um, so understand that. And this is another thing that came up the other day was. Don't just be like, oh, I'm fine. I'm not going to get coronavirus and I'm not going to get sick. That's great. But and then think like, OK, now I'm not in fear anymore because there's a lot of underlying fears. So we have to see all of them for what they are and one by one check them off so they don't trigger us in different ways. Don't come in with other people to trigger us in different ways. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have to do my guided med or the guided meditation when my upstairs neighbor leaves because I'm so sensitive to his noise. I feel like he's in my apartment. Oh, wow. That sucks. Can you, um, do you have headphones? Like, I mean, do you, have you, I, I can't remember. It's been a while since we, since we've done this. So I can't remember. I know that you've had a problem with it with your neighbor in the past being loud. Um, I guess he, stomps and walks and and all that and i had a neighbor like that i had neighbors like that before it's awful it's really awful um <clears throat> oh that sucks they broke bummer because sometimes that if you have it in your ears and you're not like <clears throat> well maybe he'll quiet down by the time we get there we're not getting there real quick so um, so, okay. So we have prayers, um, uh, power of prayer and face your financial fears Two very apropos cards for right now. What's going on with the collective and, and, and with the virus and everything. So let's continue here being, Oh, that's a lot of cards. Okay. Holy moly. Okay, we have, you're going to die with this one. I'm going to pull this one out first because it's pretty funny. Be <laughs> oh my goodness. Quiet retreat. <laughs> Quiet retreat, you guys. That is hilarious. 
Let me take out my glasses. I once meditated in a casino. My guides have gotten me to learn to do this regardless of what's going on around. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, well, you know what? I think if you're in a certain, I, I kind of, depending on what's going on, yeah, you can definitely tune stuff out. Uh, so quiet retreat, you guys. It's time to disconnect from the... It's time to disconnect from the outer world so that you can discern and process your true thoughts and feelings from your inner world. Create this quiet time for yourself and you'll have more clarity about what to do next. Like, I shit you not, you guys. Seriously. So quiet. I know. <laughs> These cars that are killing me already. I try to block my that. Yeah, I know. I know. Sometimes it's hard. Well, we'll just go with it and see what happens. Okay. So quiet retreat. Uh, I know. Seriously. <laughs> no, we're not even, this is a chunk, a big old chunk after face your financial fears and power of prayer to big components of what's going on right now. Um, what we're doing right now, we have quiet retreat, which was, what have we seen this card pop out? I, I don't even know the last time or if ever I've seen this card pop out. Quiet retreat. Uh, um, next, have courage to ask for and accept help. So this is going to be a really big thing with us probably in the next, you know, weeks and months and year and plus where people are going to have to rely on others more than they're used to, more than we're used to for some of us. Um, and just the act of being open to ask for help is a big deal. So I'm going to read this. Asking for help is a sign of strength and is accepting as is accepting it as it is offered to you. Very often when you ask opponent of being connected to our guides is help getting down. Come here. Come here, man. Come here. Come here. Come here. Say hi to Rosie. Hi. Say hi. Check this out. Inner onesie. Go. Uh, so, yeah. So, something to recognize is when we get messages from other people that are really from our guides. And that's how aware of, especially going forward in this new dynamic that we're in, uh, is help and helping other people. Oh, Rosie. Does. They say, hi, Rosie. Okay, next. Sever vows of poverty. So another one to do with money, you guys, because again, of course, money is such a big deal. I mean, there's a lot of people who just as this thing happened, I mean, immediate, it was so quick that they're already living paycheck to paycheck. And, and, you know, in the service industry, people that, you know, work off of tips, people in bars, people in restaurants. I mean, that's a huge industry, the travel industry, all the people in travel and tourism. And it's a lot. It's a lot of people not having the money that they usually do. And so this is a big thing for us to be aware of. If we if what I'm hearing is maybe not possibly for the group that's going to that is here now are going to is going to listen to this in the future that maybe you're not afraid because of of your awareness of your connect, you know, just what's going on. You're, you're not stuck in that fear, fear mindset, but much of the world is. So we're being shown this stuff about money. Um, and here it is again, pay yourself first. This card came up not too long ago. Pay yourself first. Uh, make yourself the most important financial obligation by setting aside a portion of your income every time you are paid. This loving form of self-care ensures that you'll have savings to invest, excuse me, in your present and your future. 
So another thing with money, sever vows of poverty. Dear one, there's no need to suffer, sacrifice, hold the intention of undoing any vows of poverty or self-denial that you may have made consciously or unconsciously in any lifetime as you do all effects of these vows will come undone for anyone involved in all directions of time so it's important to let go and sever these vows of poverty that we may have been connected to or connected to uh again sever vows of poverty so if we're feeling scared about money and paying bills and stuff like that, we already know that there's, you know, at least here in the U.S. and and in many countries, there's suspense. Um, food is might be a different story just because of supply. And then I think that going forward, there's going to be a lot of um coming together and sharing of these things of, of food and supplies. And this is going to start being a, a thing. Um, if that, if it, if that needs, to, if it needs to get to that point um, in, in different places. Uh, but I think initially people be like, Oh no, everything's falling apart. We're nothing. We're not going to have anything. Everything, blah, 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 you know, and they just run off in these directions in their minds. And that just kind of gets heightened in, into the collective. Myself, with Suge Knight. you and Suge Knight, you're so funny. Every time I see or hear or touch Suge Knight, I think of you just so you know, every time, every time. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suge Knight's well, <laughs> Okay, and last but not least, this is a card that came up, Release Jealousy. Jealousy is an affirmation that you don't have something and that the universe manifests exactly what, oh, wait, and the universe manifests exactly as you affirm. Let others' successes inspire rather than frustrate you. If they can have it, so can you. Uh... Let's see. What am I getting with this here? Okay. So I don't just keep hearing this thing about fairness about for some reason, this release jealousy thing and fairness coming into play. So of things not being fair or the idea of fairness. Uh, maybe we'll get back to that, but that's just what I'm hearing right now when it comes to that. Okay. So quiet retreat, have courage to accept help, pay yourself first. And I think this thing with pay yourself first is, um, I think we just need to be really conscious right now of, of what we're consuming and what we're planning for and what we're doing just right now. Things just feel kind of suspended. So self-care, self-love, being your first priority when it comes to your energy right now is really important. Okay. All right, guys. So we did Angel Oracle, wait, sorry, Archangel Oracle and whew, um, Angels of Abundance. Uh, and now I'm going to get into the it's like willow gold. I think that leprechauns hold the gold for the fairies. I'm like the Shrek Knight leprechaun. Ah, that's hilarious. Maybe you are. Maybe you are. That is so funny. Okay. Um, I'm feeling the dragon fate Oracle right now. So we're going to, we're going to do the dragon fate Oracle. I love the dragon fate Oracle. Gosh, they're always the ones that get me all emotional. It's ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. 
I guess our guys are gone, Kevin and Sean. Kevin always just comes in and then he leaves real quick. Kevin's not still here, is he? He's notorious for that. Well, it's, it's us three ladies. And we've got our Dragon Fate Oracle here. Let's see what, let's see what other amazing cards we're going to get today. Oh. Lady of the New Buds. Nurture Tenderness. That's the wrong camera. Nurture Tenderness. Or is it? No, yeah, that's wrong. Oh my God, I was so confused there for a second. Look at all those butterflies. Card number 25, Lady of the New Buds. Haven't seen this card in a while either. Card number 25, We're getting a lot of cards today. We haven't not gotten in a while. Um, A lot of those Archangel cards we see a lot though. <laughs> um... So, Lady of the New Buds, Nurture Tenderness. So, along the same lines of that sensitivity card, right? The Lady of the New Buds speaks. How my garden has grown about me. See how my children, the darling buds, clamor for night and can be so touchy during the day. I must shelter them from harshness and keep them in a safe place till they are strong enough to branch out. Even then, my watchful eye will look out for their care. You see, so many people see the beauty and do not understand where it sprang from, the rich, loomy soil, the sweet water poured from the water dragon fay into this earth, the minerals of the natural realms, the light of the sun, and the shining sweetness of the crystal moon all have anointed my garden with their blessings. And then there is me. So many see my garden and wonder at it, but they do not see the work and the care that has preceded my, my domain. Its beauty is a result of love, care, natural growth, and attention to each and every one of its inhabitants. When your growth appears around you from the seeds you have planted, take time to tend this garden, enlist the assistance of like-minded souls, and just as you would not feed these tender buds poisons and pollutants, do not feed your ideas, the opinions and energies of those who are not in integrity. Stay true to the vision of your creation and truly take a Take a little time each day to tend this garden. Be it of love, ideas, little ones, or creative endeavors until they are robust and begin to grow into their own energy. For now, it is the tender time, the time when the buds are at most risk from the frost of rejection, the poison of judgment, and the choke of cruelty. Be vigilant, and you too will have a garden for all to enjoy and love. Many will feel that you are fortunate indeed to have created such a beautiful Eden, but they will not see the care you have taken to grow this. But I have seen. I have seen it all. Aww. Okay, let me get my dog back up here. Come here, babe. She's doing that pacing thing. <laughs> um okay let's continue about the lady of the new buds she is the dragon fade being who cares for all new tender growth including yours Whisper to her your dreams and ideas plant your seeds and watch them grow she waters her plants each day clears the dead wood from the garden, ensures that all has sufficient water and that the soil in which all is planted is rich and fertile. Start from these basics and you too will have a wonderful experience. Allow the Lady of the New Buds to inspire you with care, 
for your own budding projects, beings, loves, and responsibilities. In this way, you too will grow a secret and sometimes very public garden which creates more and more beauty in the world. And you will know that caring for the tender bud creates long lasting beauty and a joy of, or sorry, for the senses, a treasure for Gaia to cherish. And divinatory meanings, an affinity with flowers and gardens, projects need, need tending, care every day for small matters and the large will take care will care for themselves resist change resisting change is resisting the life force itself look at everything in nature the seed does not remain a seed the seed the seedling grows the tree seems unrelated to its origins but at the moment by holding on tight to the person you believe you must be you're running the risk of denying your own life force change is positive stasis as a resting point can work well as a life choice it can be a kind of slow death the emergence will come at the right time because the bud will be forced to flower at some stage do not allow yourself to wither in bud divine guidance needs practical application to work most definitely Action teamed with inspiration will create a beautiful, bountiful paradise. Work hard at love. Working with the Lady of New Buds, Herb Herbalore flower readings, growing a new garden with magical and symbolic meaning, coming up with a daily routine to nurture and grow your, your new projects, Flower essences, ess essential oils, accepting compliments for hard work, knowing your efforts have come to fruition, and accepting that you have been a driving force in a beautiful achievement. Wow. And that is it. Lady of the New Buds. So we've talked about that. And this has come up a lot as far as working with and connecting with nature at this time. We just talked about it a little bit ago, maybe an hour ago, uh, when we're, we're talking about how best to take care of us ourselves and, and get through this really a lot of self-care. We got this, <laughs> the first card that popped up here, quiet retreat. So this whole thing with, with our situation that we're in right now globally with with nature and connecting with our own life force like when, when we got this card whoa this card gifts from god that is about um nurturing our own nurturing our own gifts um, our abilities. Oh. Sorry. And these things kind of coinciding together. Uh, being divinely guided to connect with nature, to cultivate, to grow things in nature, to bring nature in to connect. I mean, we talked about all these different things that I have going on here, <laughs> plants and flowers and, and crystals and rock salt and essential oils and candles. And I mean, it is, it, that's just everything that's all up in here. <laughs> so this is definitely a more bigger, greater push and understanding that this is really big. And, 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 and so we have such an opportunity right now to, like you said, with your friends there, Willow, you know, and so many other people who either have to work from, from home or doing different things or juggling, you know, different, different, you know, trying to figure out the, the new way of life for right now. Um, but they also have this great opportunity 
and so many people like there are people that are having to do and and, and manage more be, or differently than they did before because everything just kind of got blown up and then there's people who are are spending time alone and at home and uh really have more of an opportunity to go within and and really kind of figure out what it is that they could be doing at this time to really get into alignment with not only what's going on with the world and creation and where their part in is with all that, but just stronger connection with their own soul. And that I think is, is part of this whole thing, this whole thing, just a deeper connection with ourselves and with mother earth and, and, and all that, that takes place every single day with all of us, everything has been disrupted and we need to get back to basics and connecting energetically with, with those things that are important and just know and recognize that that our basics will be taken care of and and let those things go um i love this my new project i have a huge garden outside i'm excited oh that's wonderful big enough to share with community oh honey that's beautiful there you go there you go Def that's important um, that's fantastic. So yeah, so more definitely that. And remember this last thing, accepting you have been a driving force and a beautiful achievement. Even if that is just for greater understanding of yourself and self-awareness and connectedness to Gaia creation in general, <laughs> the universe, um, the multiverse. It's so very big and we're so very tiny and, but we're also so very big in a very tiny body and just these little moments that we have. And, and so all of, all of this, and for some of us, there's not a whole lot of change in our daily lives. It just really isn't. And for some people, it's a big, big deal, big, huge deal, major changes every single day taking place. And um, we, those of us that are more spiritually connected, that are tapped in um, with our guides who aren't living in a state of fear, need to hold space and, and, and work with Gaia, with nature, and and really put that out to to the rest of the collective. Okay, guys. Um, let's see where are we going from here. Been playing with these wild and known tarot cards, so we're gonna do that real quick. Get into these tarot cards, and then. Would you guys like a card, a reading, personally? And then we will stop this feed. And before we do the meditation, um, I'm going to need to eat. I won't make it out the other side. <laughs> My stomach's already growling. Um, whoa, big old chunk of cards came out right here. The death card. The lover's card. The four of pentacles. And the daughter of pentacles. Okay, I'm going to keep going before I get into anything.
yeah, definitely going to need to eat something before we, um, the tower, ace of wands, and son of pentacles, whoops, son of pentacles. So we have daughter of pentacles, son of pentacles, the tower, eight, the tower is... I can't honestly think of a better card right underneath the death card. So we have the death card and the tower card right underneath each other. Then we have the lovers and the ace of wands like that. Daughter of Pentacles, Son of Pentacles. Okay. We're going to keep going here. So we're building a little story. Still have this, this four of, take a look at this four of Pentacles. Tell me if any, if you, anything comes to mind, first thing you see or, or think of when you see this card. We definitely have the infinity symbols going on. Yeah, that is true. I don't even see those, honestly. <laughs> I have to be like specifically shown those to see that in this card. But um, chime in if, if any specific energy comes out to you with this, with this card. And I'll tell you what it is that I always feel and feel with this card and then we'll see if what you guys think of that okay we're gonna continue so you guys both would like some okay so we'll get through this and then we'll see you guys um Father of Wands. We went to a funeral yesterday. Who was that for? Father of Wands here. Uh, five of Swords. What is our next eclipse? Let's take a look here. I'm feeling some, I'm getting some eclipse energy. June. June, we have a lunar eclipse in June. Wow, not till December. Oh no, sorry. Sorry, I'm like, that is a really long time. That doesn't sound right. Um, wow. This website right here, uh, it tells you, here, I'll, let me get the thing. Seventy-seven days. When I looked at it, it, was seventy-seven days, sixteen hours, and thirty-three minutes to the next eclipse on June twenty-first. It's a solar eclipse. It's not a total though. It's an annular. And I pop this in here for you guys if you're interested in going to this website. I just was, I just got this, um, it could be why I'm using these cards, part of why I'm using these cards. 
An annual, annular solar eclipse happens when the moon covers the sun's center, leaving the sun's visible outer edges to form a ring of fire or annulus around the moon. Oh, how cool is that? There's this little article off to the side. So that's what an annular solar eclipse is. So that is happening on June, what was it? June 20, no. Yeah, June 20, I'm getting myself all confused, but June 21st. So, uh, let's see. That has something to do with what we're getting here. Oh, your uncle passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. Honey. How was it? How was the funeral? Uh, I have, well, I haven't been to a funeral in a long time, but in the past when I've gone to funerals, they were really hard for me just physically because, and emotionally, just because of what I would pick up from people. And this is back when I was, you know, sick with fibro and all that. So it was like extra hard. Oh, look at this. The world. So anyway, um, was that with your, with your uncle, was that, was that sudden or was it something that um, you guys were prepared for? Exactly. Mm hmm. Isn't that awesome? I never, I didn't always see it like that when I got the, these cards, but as I started to get it more and more with these cards, there is so much more happening in these cards than I think most people are. Or, well, in regards to every card, there's more happening there than most people are aware of. But this particular deck has a lot of that going on. So does the Angel Tarot. But yeah, when this card comes up, I always, I feel this, it's either, it's either that, um, it's either Mother Mary and or just angelic presence, just that angelic, like all of our ascended masters are angelics. And so it's kind of one in the same. So when I see this, I feel Mother Mary. I feel super divine. It's like that that presence in the reading. Whenever I get this card, whenever this card comes up in a reading, it 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 just has this uh, divine presence to it, and it talks about there being this. And and of course, look at the world card comes up there too. Um, the lover's card, the death card, uh, the tower, and the ace of wands. Come on, people. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. With the five of swords, things breaking, things, things come apart, things splitting. There, there is this thing with timing with the eclipse coming up in June. Um, like that's like a reset. I'm feeling, I'm feeling that'll be a great reset for us with what's gone on between um, February, March, April, May with this whole thing with, with the coronavirus and people being sick. Um, <laughs> it was good, wasn't it? Uh, so that is something to of note. Oh, that, that was good. I'm sorry. I misunderstood what you were saying. Um, oh good. I'm glad. I like happy funerals and, 
and remembrances party, whatever you want to call it with people. Um, those are great when people all have that real celebration of life. Like we're talking about, like we're talking about, that's a big deal, you know, is, is celebrating life and coming together and all that stuff. So I'm glad that your family was happy to be together. Okay. Major ignition, um, firestorm igniting, um, the tower, the tower always means there's a deconstruction for a reconstruction. Uh, so a lot of this going on, obviously, uh, the death card speaking specifically literal death, literal, um, invasion of space and energy, a, uh, accelerant to the other side, an accelerant to the other side. Like that's what I'm hearing. An accelerant to the other side into transition into the other side from, from living to dead. You know, that, that whole transitional thing, there's this great accelerant propulsion into that with, with this, but these are right next to each other. How great is that? I love these two cards next to each other. Look at that. Both birds. One, it, the one is, has transitioned. There's death. There's a renewal taking place there. And then look at the lovers. Like free. This is what I'm seeing here with this lovers card. I am free. Next, next, like next transition, next free freeness, you know, that kind of thing all with this. Look, I mean, look at this dynamic energy here that we have with this. Look at this, the tower, the ace of swords, the father of swords. I mean, shit, dude, this is a lot of major fire energy taking place here. Big time, big, big, big time. The world card being affected. I think everybody can, everybody can agree to that. The world card being affected, the world card directly under our four of pentacles. That I just, where'd it go, man? Oh, there it is. Yeah, that took a trip. <laughs> is, is that telling in some way? The world took a tumble. <laughs> The world took a little dive there. <laughs> so we have these two cards. We have this, this beautiful card right on top of the world card. This is how they landed. <sighs> these cards, I, I, I. I was a little skeptical going in with these cards for this reading. Now I'm fully on board, honestly, because I was like, really? Like I took them out earlier. I'm like, really? And they sat there and I'm like, really? These are the cards you're going to be using right now? Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Most, most definitely. Aw. Aw, oh, that's lovely. I'm so glad to hear that. She says, it was a beautiful reception. There are flowers everywhere in the house because of it. Oh, that's fantastic. What kind of flowers? Gardenias? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm on point with that uh, eclipse thing. What do you guys think? Getting the four of cups with this, with this, uh, with the moon here. And then look at that, the two of swords. Aw, a few people, oh, a few people sent flowers and plants to your down. Oh, that's nice. So, 
The two of swords, the four of cups, air and water energy. So we got our water coming in with the four of cups. I'm hearing transitions. Going from light to dark, the reset. There is a time, there's a, there's a, we're going into a time of, of dormant, of uh, like, it's, it's interesting. It's really interesting energy because it's like, we're going into this inner, this inner world energy, but then it's coming out really big in a, in a, in an even like in a different connected way. Um, so as we're being quarantined, as we're having to stay in, as you know, that may even get more and more intense as far as the rules and regulations of that goes, as time goes on a little bit, that's beside the point. Um, but this is definitely talking about an energetic reset and getting and preparing for all that. So not just waiting, waiting it out, but, but the dynamics and the energy before it. But look at that. I'm like, I think we've got some clips business <laughs> and definite affirmation on that. So we're looking at a good, where are we now? March, April, May, June. We're looking about three months of, of, of dealing with this in its hottest peak, um, especially for the U.S. and Canada, it is hitting, hitting us at the same time, basically. Um, we're just like right there. We're a couple weeks behind Italy um, as far as, as what's going on there with the virus and all that. Um, and we're even, we're even behind them on what we're doing with how we're dealing with it, too. But anyway, regardless of all that, we are definitely um, looking at, to me, this is really, this is, this is not bad news. It's, 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 it's to me, there's a definite point in time to, to look at and that is June. And it's with this, with and around this eclipse. So right now all of this is peaking and coming to this, this point with the, with the equinox and and the tipping point and all that good stuff. We're tipping from, you know, our winter to our spring, the Northern to the the Southern Hemisphere energies are shifting big time. So shifting in all directions. I'm just seeing this like energy thing just shifting in all directions. If you want to take a look at this card for a little bit of visual with that four of pentacles. Uh, so yeah, so there's that. And just in general, I'm feeling this real kind of re with the family unit. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, you'll have to take pictures. Oh, okay. You know that there's, um, there's a couple of, of apps that, uh, you, you take your, one is called plant snap, but you take, it's an app where you, you, like if you don't know what a plant or flower or leaf or whatever is, and you you just take a picture of it and it has this, it tries to match it, and they're pretty good. And you can and you can if they don't have it, you can add it to it and try to like figure out that the databases are getting bigger and bigger. But it, they're really cool, like really cool apps. So check that out. Um, okay, so as I was saying, feeling a, a reconnectedness with the family unit on, <laughs> on different levels, more than just the obvious, right? With everybody having to be home, like home from school, home from work, family units all together, like they're not, not used to. So there's a lot of that going on. But aside from that, just family unit on like a soul based level, a family unit of that coming together, um, even more, way more through this, way more through this. And because on a bright note, and because we have had the energy and the transitions of, of you know, death and people moving and transitioning forward, we, we have even more support on the other side 
than we did before for what is to come and what we need to be doing and, and those people that we need to be connected to in the future and how the the ones that crossed over can help connect us to our our soul group that are still here. They're showing us all of that right now. So that's part of it. Um really awesome energy you guys again celebration of life i'm hearing celebration of life let's see what else we got here i'm being told to keep going like to me i'm just like this is amazing right here this is awesome this energy this what i'm seeing here oh i have to see my Blackie wants to come in. We have another father, father of swords. You have to study flowers more. Yeah, me too. Father of swords. So the father of wands, the father of swords. The Son of Swords, a lot of this male energy coming through here. I just see a lot of stepping up in the collective with the with the with the our male counterparts. Just just really a lot of stepping up, a lot of stepping up um, financially, um, helping with it in just a lot of different ways. Our our the those in power. I'm feeling those in power. Our male counterparts, those in power. Um, really stepping up, really kind of assuming the leadership roles that, that, um, that they were meant for being more dynamic, um, that kind of thing. And I feel that on a global level and on a community and, and home base level too, from the, from the teenager, you know, uh, in the household with their parents to our global leaders you know, on that from, and not just, not just for the, for the male, not just for the men, but that is a big part of it. We also have the female aspect here too, but they're holding, they're doing things on a different level, on an energetic spiritual level. So, so the female divine feminine, all of that is more in the healing side, the spiritual side, the, 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 the keeping the, all that stuff going kind of traditional roles is kind of what I'm seeing here in, a, in an interesting way, but it, it crisscrossing. It's also crisscrossing a lot, but big time with, with, um, look at this, like big time with this dynamic energy, new ways of thinking, new ways of structuring things for the future too, with our, with our global leaders. Um, and also them kind of stepping aside for more of this kind of energy and kind of seeing things and the world energy. Everything needs to be looked at in a different way. And I think that they're seeing that. Um, and they will see that more, definitely. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Still not done here. What else could there possibly be? <laughs> Look at this. A coming together. We have the two of cups, you guys. More water, more healing energy coming through. This is about pouring our resources together, coming through dynamic love energy, flower energy. Speaking of flowers and flower essences. So a coming together, like I'm, I'm feeling like this real coming together in community and in small ways at first and in, and in ways, this is going to be through technology. Like we're, we're still going to be having to deal with stuff, you know, really separate right now, more than we're used to and helping each other in a, in a way, but really really getting into more connectedness through technology through in more than we have before um, with people because we're not allowed to not not what I mean 
we're supposed to be keeping our distance um, from from people and, and stuff like that. So, okay, guys, that is it. I'm hearing. We finally got our. Oh, look at this on the back side. <laughs> I put the. I put the. Uh, I go. That's it. And I put the the deck down, but it, instead of face down, face up, and we have the Father of Cups. So another three, three, maybe we're not done. So on the flip or the, on the flip, it's what I call it. The flip side of the deck Father of Cups, we have the Two of Pentacles, and underneath that, the Strength card, and that's the Eleven card, the Strength card, with another Rose, another Infinity Symbol. So really, truly, um, are we done now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. I'm just seeing with this, um, I mean, I have different, there's a whole lot of different things that I see when I see these cards in particular, the strength card and this, this two of pentacles, but I guess what keeps coming into my head with this is understanding the differences. Oh gosh, how do I put this? Um, like they're so different. We have a, we have a butterfly and we have a lion. They're both represented and they're both showing the infinity symbol. You see? So they're, they're exactly the same is what I'm hearing. They're exactly the same in, in their very own ways of, of being, of, of having strength and being dynamic and, um, and infinite with these, with this, it's just like, there's this, uh, I guess that more of like what we are in, in body and what we are in spirit is what I'm hearing. This like the same, but different. We're both infinite. Both of those sides are infinite. So I think that that kind of is the best way I can describe what, what I'm being shown here with these cards. Oh man. Just made a rose portal because my local flower shop, they're allowing me to put some art. Oh, that's awesome. I want to see your rose portal. That's so fantastic. I'm going to have to, you're going to have to take pictures once you get up in there. Okay, guys. So I, we're officially done <laughs> with this part. We're, we're done with the, uh, with the tarot here. Remember the eclipse in June. Um, this, this, transition this transition with our with with the ones who who we have lost if you will ones who have transitioned um di this divine energy this coming together of family both familiar and soul family And for us to feel really good about, about this dynamic energy coming through with all of these fathers, the fathers of, of swords, of wands, and of cups. I 
showing us that we can really um, put trust and faith in, in the process and in, in what's going to be going on in the future. Kind of give us reassurance there, I guess, is what is what I'm feeling with that. Just to have this reassurance that we have like all aspects. There's so many aspects of this is, that's being supported for our world. <laughs> okay. And lions have come, yeah, lions have come up a lot, a lot. If you look at my feed um, in my Instagram, I've been so pushed with, with the lions. Lions coming through a lot, very, very big time, very much so. My dragon portal has an infinity loop around its Toro, what is that? Toradol, Toradol core? Oh, that, that went, oh, I want to see that. Oh, I might need that dragon portal. Damn you. I just moved my blue one into my bedroom. Like it was in here, the two of them, my pink one and my blue one were in my living room and my window for the longest time. And just not that I even needed to for any other reason. I'm like, I'm going to put this in my bedroom now. And now it's, it's in my 